All right, there's a song on there on the, the Metal 2007 and the Metal 2 record. It's called Chasing the High, and uh, it features uh, uh, Willie Adler, Will Adler from uh, Lamb of God. And that was pretty cool for me because I remember when they came out, I was like, okay, this band's pretty cool because they seem to be taking the, uh, the Pantera thing and they're doing their own thing with it and very aggressive and Randy's vocals were like, you know, very, you know, very fillish, um, some of the wrists, but I knew there was something going on here. It was almost like, uh, they had their own twist on it. So they weren't, they weren't copying. They were being very heavily fan like influenced, but they made it their own thing. And obviously they went on to become a huge band. Um, so it was really cool when I found out the guys were, <sighs> When they were teenagers, young kids, they listened to some of the Annihilator stuff. And um, I know Mark's, I guess, considered more the, the shredder type thing, Mark Morton. But um, great players. But I talked to Willie and I said, Willie, you got to come on a song and just rip it. And we picked the fastest song uh, called Chasing the High, where Mike Mangini, our drummer, was uh, sweating nonstop, I'm sure, recording that one. Um, and I said, you come on the fast song. You just come on and just do it. And he's like, oh, no, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's not going to be good enough. And I was just trying to coach him and producing him saying, hey, dude, listen, you're effing good. You've got your own set. It doesn't matter who knows what scale, who can play clearer, who can play this. It's a feel thing, man. Some of the best stuff ever was done by a guy who didn't even play lead, Malcolm Young, you know, um, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen can't, couldn't play his solo perfectly a second time ever. It was all feel and one off, and same with his rhythms. That's why they single tracked his guitar most of his careers because he he couldn't double them because every take he did was a different feel, and that's what was so great about him. So I said to Willie, just do your thing, you know, just do your thing. That's what this is about, and it's not a competition. He came on and he just, it was killer. It was killer. So anyway, check out Chasing the High. Uh, Lamb of God rule, of course. Willie absolutely rules, and uh, it's great to see that they're still kicking butt. Absolutely. The song off Metal and Metal 2 called Couple Suicide was a pretty cool tune. It had uh, originally uh, Angela Gasso from Arch Enemy, who was a singer, of course, in Arch Enemy. She was awesome. 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 Um, which was why I asked her if she would do me the honor to sing on the song, Couple Suicide. Um, the other singer on there was the guy who wrote the lyrics and the melodies, uh, co-writer with me, who many know as, uh, one badass hard rock slash punk and metal fan, uh, Danko Jones, another great Canadian musician. Um... So it was Danko and I have written some songs together, and a couple have appeared on, a few have appeared on Annihilator Records, um, and I'm hoping someday we can write some more songs together because we're a good songwriting team. When I let him do the lyrics and the melodies, and completely do it all, and I just do the music, it's perfect. Um, and we did the song "Couple Suicide." I asked Danko, I said, "Hey, listen, I'd love to hear a, the contrast of Angela Gosso." singing with your voice on this because it doesn't make any sense to put those vocals together it's not like your classic you know um, that type of metal or music that's going on the last decade and a half where you've got the, the operatic girl singer and you've got the heavy death metal -y kind of guy singer um, this was more of a wait a second you got a rock and roll punk singer guy here in Danko Jones and then you've got the queen of that kind of heavy death kind of voice that, that was with uh, when she was with Arch Enemy. So I thought that would be interesting. I had no idea how that would turn out, but Danko was like, he was just not even considering it. He was like, yes, like that'd be cool. So I knew it was probably correct. Talked to Angela and she was um, uh, totally into it and very confident that whatever she would put on there would, would work. And I was worried, like, would it even work? Uh, but uh, I was the least confident. And then when, when she sent the stuff back, it was like more more of a backing vocal in a way, like a response kind of to the main vocal of Danko. But it was, without it, it would not have been as, anywhere near as good a song. Um, 
and she's got some big badass pipes, we say. Um, so that was an honor. And also, of course, to have uh, someone she is and was connected to, Michael Amott, on the other song, Operation Annihilation. So, Couple Suicide totally rocks. Uh, I really would love to see if Danko would do uh, write some more songs with me. So, I'm going to get off this video here and message Danko and say, Hey, what are you doing, bro? Okay, we got a song called, what was it? Uh, Army of One. <laughs> Sniffles. Um, Army of One is kind of like your typical Annihilator cheesy anthem -y gang backing vocal kind of thing and it, it reminded me a little bit of Anthrax clearly and, and there was definitely a little 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 riff in there um, right after the choruses there's a dun, 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 that's clearly an Anthrax influenced uh, riff intentionally um, because I, I was a huge Anthrax fan of course um, so the first thing I did on that one is I wanted to get to uh, see if Scott Ian might play on it and I think he was busy Hopefully that's what it was. Uh, I think he was busy on that, and I thought, oh, okay, well, that's okay. I'll uh, I'll get somebody else to play on it because the whole the whole premise, the whole idea of this record for the guests was to have people that either liked Annihilator or my guitar playing uh, and uh, wanted to come on and do it. So it wasn't like, hey, I'll pay you money, you come on and play, and, and they go, who are you and what band are you? It had to be somebody that you know kind of liked what what I was doing or my band was doing. At some point, you know, some era, even, you know. Um, so I thought, hmm. And then it was, uh, and and of course, it helps if I like them too. And uh, one of uh, one of the guys that had known from an early early stage, probably eighties, that I was a huge fan was uh, Steve Kudlow, which you might know him, Lips from Anvil. Had to get Steve on there, and he he was actually in Ottawa where I was recording this record in 2007 and he was taking his daughter to a hockey game on the weekend so he was here for the weekend and his wife and daughter came down and I said could you come down and you know blast off a solo and he was like sure man he comes down and uh, that's what he did blasted off a solo like that it was just like what a pro I mean this guy comes in he, here you want a tuner okay and he used this this white flying V that he'd uh, he knew I was going to like it because he knew I was a huge fan. Uh, and then he walks in with his, his classic white flying beast. And, and, um, or uh, the tremolo red, black red. -y. I can't even remember the actual color now. But it was that one, the classic one that he uh, used. I think two of them. So he came in and just fired that solo off. And I'm sitting here going, okay, that's it. You know, I remember smoking at the time. And finish the solo and let's go on the back patio deck and go smoke and that was it and he went to his hockey game that was it now on the original 2007 metal record and on the new one actually and on metal too but the original 2007 metal had a bonus track that wasn't available anywhere else except Japan because Japan liked to have at least one additional content uh traditionally than uh, everywhere else in the world they want a unique thing um, and I don't know why they get that but they get it and um, it just seems to be a tradition so I had to do something special there so I I was living in Ottawa Canada at the time which is where Exciter is from and I'd already been friends with Dan Beeler the drummer singer from that legendary and extremely influential band in case you don't know it, they influenced every big metal band after them, including the Big Four, I'm sure. Um, but Dan Beeler, drummer-singer, bass player Alan Johnson, and guitar player John Ritchie, who's no longer in the band, uh, but a friend of mine, Daniel's a uh, guitar player in the band now, but the legendary classic three guys put out, to me, the, the Heavy Metal Maniac and Violence and Force, those first two records they put out were just... Especially ugh, the first one was just Heavy Metal Maniac was just insane. It was like taking Motorhead to a new fast level, and somehow they worked in the Les Binks drumming occasionally, uh, which was the priest drummer on the badass Hellbent for Leather Stained Class, all that stuff. Um, but it had traces of you know, like Dio and 
Priest and, and all and that, but it was like Motorhead on, like, fast. It's like the beginnings of speed metal, right? And I think Exciter may have been possibly, arguably, the first band. Um, Canadian. Yeah. So, he also is a painter. And he was painting the house I had in uh, Ottawa. <laughs> and I asked him, because he, he's also, Dan is sang on uh, so many Annihilator records. People don't know, but if you look in the credits, the middle career of Annihilator, he's on, he's singing on so many of them, on the, the backing vocals. Uh, and so many people just don't, don't know it. Hopefully you know it now. So I said to Dan, I said, um, on the original one, he sang it, of course. And on the original Heavy Metal Maniac on Annihilator's 2007 metal, Dan sang, and jo um, Alan Johnson, the bass player, played the bass. And I played the guitar. So that was just trippy for me because as a teenager that was like I went to high school and I was just getting into high school when Dan Beeler was leaving high school so I'd walk in the high school down the halls little little kid trying to grow his hair long probably the same length as this and you know I was just huge fan um, I think it was the just before Mob Rules came out that I was in high school and Dan was leaving high school and he'd walk down the high school or down the hallway There'd be girls around him, and um, he was in grade 12 or something. He was still a young kid, right? And um, I'd look up to him and like, wow, he had this Judas Priest patch on his on his jean jacket over his leather jacket, and he was just like, what's a what's a rock star doing in a high school? <laughs> so that was trippy for me, but I idolized Dan and John Ritchie and Alan, and I saw them when they as an emergency, uh, the support act never made it across the border Exciter was called last minute I think the day of to say listen you have to to support uh, Ronnie James Deal with Black Sabbath um, in Ottawa and I got to go to that show uh, I just went in by myself bought a ticket for it just to watch um, oh yeah here's a cool story so Dan was of course those guys were at the beginning of their big career and putting out Heavy Metal Maniac and they get called for, for this dream gig of for them and for anyone to, to support Deal uh, with Sabbath. And there is a photograph that Dan gave me because we've been friends for decades. He gave me and said, check this photo out. This is the actual photo that you went to, Jeff, uh, where you were watching our show, where we supported Sabbath with Deal. And it's Dan sneaking out before they went on with a camera behind his drum kit, you know, incognito. Took the picture and through the drum kit, you can see one little kid sitting there with nobody beside him near the front at the seats and I looked at it and put on my computer zoomed in and it was me sitting there so here I am all by myself at this concert waiting and I was actually waiting uh, I hadn't got into Sabbath with Dio at that point I did the year later after I saw the show but that I was there to see Exciter um, this this last minute edition Exciter is why I went and there's this picture Dan took and had on his wall for years and uh, he gave me it and uh, there's little Jeff who would have been, I don't know, 15, whatever. So that was just like a really incredible moment for me. Uh, and to have them on the record playing the song that got me into them, Heavy Metal Maniac. That was only on the Japanese version of the 2007 metal record. So we thought, well, let's put it on the, uh, the new version. And we did, and Stu sang instead of Dan. We kept Alan Johnson, the bass player's bass on there. Um, and we just replaced Dan's vocals with Stu, because Stu's a huge Exciter fan too. And we left Dan's backing vocals on there, so we still got Dan on there, and of course Alan playing bass. So that was absolutely amazing. Anyway, that's it, I need a coffee. I hope everybody likes this, uh, this cool twist on the original. It's pretty fun. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Enjoy it, it's Dave Lombardo and Stu Block, and a lot of amazing players. Check out the original one too so you can compare it. It's on me, yeah.